Magandang, magandang umaga, Malacanang Press Corps. Welcome sa ating press briefing ngayon, June 13th. Updates on the Department of Social Welfare and Development's food stamp program were discussed during the sectoral meeting this morning where President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. approved the pilot and full implementation of the projects under this program. Aside from this, the President also tasked the DSWD in coordination with the Health Department to look into the nutritional value of the food that would be given to the program beneficiaries. Bukod sa target beneficiaries na bottom 1 million households, pinatitiyak din ng Pangulo na mapabilang sa programa ang mga single parent, pregnant, and lactating women para ma-address ang first 1,000 days advocacy. To give us more details about this, we are joined by DSWD Secretary Rex Gachalian and recently appointed Health Secretary Dr. Ted Erbosa. Secretary Erbosa previously served as an undersecretary of the DOH from 2010 to 2015 and uh, was a special advisor to the National Task Force Against COVID-19. Well, good morning, Secretary Gachalian and morning, Secretary morning. Erbosa. Good morning. Good morning so let's, uh, morning, I guess everyone. we could start with the uh, food stamp program. Secretary Well, Rex? as mentioned, uh, when I came to visit you before, we had this program of feeding our uh, food poor families, a million of them. So uh, as uh, mentioned by uh, Daphne, the president approved the run of the pilot, which is fully funded through grants. Uh, grants from the ADB, uh, JICA, and the French Development Agency. So that will be 3 million US dollars all in all. Uh, there's a provision to expand it. ADB is still working on other trust funds so that we can expand the pilot. But other than that, it's a f all green lights go na for the pilot, which will take place shortly. Uh, from the pilot, we will see the nuances. What needs to be improved, what needs to be enhanced, what needs to be discontinued. It'll run for six months. Uh, we are doing the pilot so that we don't end up with wasteful spending. We want to make sure that when we do expand the program on its regular run, even if the president already approved it, we want to learn from the pilot and we want to start right. That was the takeaway. The talking to, um, uh, speaking with the economic team last Friday, the main takeaway was um, tighten the design. Uh, importante, we start the program right. And that is the takeaway. But second, Kanina, as mentioned by Daphne, the president also wants to bring in uh, pregnant lactating mothers because we have to start looking at stunting in this country. And the first 1,000 days program is very important. Uh, if you look at the family of programs in DSWD, and I'm sure she said her, Ted will also explain in DOH, there are ongoing first 1,000 days programs already. But ang gusto ng ating Pangulo, isynchronize natin itong mga programa na to sa isang pamilya ng mga programa wherein hindi siya parang silo na isa-isa. Kung hindi, pagtapos sa program A, pupunta siya sa program B, pupunta siya sa program C. Alam natin yung uh, problema ng stunting is very important and very crucial na masugpo natin if we are to invest in human capital. Kaya nga, uh, mag-collaborate kami ni Secretary Herbosa dahil meron tayo, kung natandaan nyo, yung PMNP o in Philippine Multisectoral Nutrition Program. It's a program that was launched launch mga 60 days ago with the World Bank's backing. 70% of that pro program is with DOH in implementing food uh, nutrition-specific programs. Kami naman sa DSWD, nutrition-sensitive programs. Kasi alam naman natin na hindi lang pagkain ang tinitignan natin pagdating sa paglaban sa stunting, kundi yung overall well-being ng isang ina, pati na ninong kabataan. Kasama dyan yung wash facilities, kasama dyan yung... Uh, uh, making sure na may enough uh, facilities for child development, katulad ng mga daycare center. So pag iigtingin natin yung programa na yan, para masynchronize naman natin siya dito sa upcoming natin na food stamps program. Uulitin namin, ang marching order ng Pangulo, dapat malabanan natin ang stunting at ang kagutuman, pagsani puwersa ng mga iba't ibang programa ng gobyerno para hindi sila piece by piece ang turing sa mga programa. Okay, thank you. Let's hear from Secretary Arbosa. Ay, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat at uh, thank you for uh, coming and hearing the program. It's my first cabinet meeting, so it's very interesting. Uh, of course, I didn't know the planning of this, but uh, hearing it, it actually jibes. No? Katulong talaga sa for the poorest one million, be able to give them food stamps so that they will have nutritious food. So that was the first question of the president. 
uh, make sure that the food that is given is of nutritional value. So that's our role. So we have the National Nutrition Council, the FNRI, that can actually take care of studying this. The second question to Secretary Rex is uh, hunger and being poor are very subjective ideas, and how do you measure them objectively? This president wants it measured objectively. So, uh, so I countered, sir, actually we've been working with DSWD. Health actually is the measure of stunting and malnutrition. So what happens in a, if there's a feeding program, for example, like the st food stamp program, we will locate through, the, through our partners and the LGU, locate who are the mildly malnourished, uh, moderately malnourished and severely malnourished. And, the, and there are uh, medical parameters of who to say they are. But we use the, the weight, the height, the mid-upper arm circumference or the MUAC. And what we'll do is make sure that we monitor that the food stamp program is changing. The, the people that are severely malnourished will, after some time of this food stamp, will become moderately mildly until they're no longer malnourished. And this is very important, I told the president, uh, most of this feeding program isn't recovered. The, the effects of malnutrition and stunting, you don't recover it like a wound that heals. It's a permanent. That's why uh, if you want a human capital or mga tao, citizens na magtatrabaho, and they're intelligent, they will pass school, you really need to, to feed them well during their early life years. Kasi dun yung growth and development na kailangan nila. So I think we will be in full support. And I, I think my seatmate, Secretary Ben Hur said, kami gagawa niyan. Sabi niya, kami gagawa niyan. Kasi the implementation of the food stamp is at the local chief executive. So nagtuhog-tuhog na, and we will all help each other with this uh, really good program for uh, food stamps and hunger. Uh, if I can just add again as an emphasis, uh, the new dimension that we bring to the table today is folding in the first 1,000 days into the program. Yes. Kung natandaan nyo, nung bumalik ka, pumunta ako dito nung unang beses, pinag-usapan natin labanan ng kagutuman. Pero ang gusto ng Pangulo natin is to add that dimension of stunting into the picture. Kasi irreversible yun. And ulitin ko, this is an investment to human capital. So if we are to invest in human capital, we have to fight stunting. Uh, yan yung co-collaborate namin, not just support, but work closely with the DOH was the instruction of the President. Kasi nga, it's both a social welfare issue and a health issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. So just to reiterate, the first 1,000 days uh, is the uh, to address the nutrition of the mother because uh, it is believed that the intelligence and the well-being of a child starts at the first 1,000 days from pregnancy. Inside so the inside the womb. So this program will also support that. Now, um, you mentioned the whole of government approach. You have the DILG. Uh, we also have the Department of Agriculture. Yes. Maybe Secretary Rex, you want to mention uh, the role of the DA here. Yes, because the uh, whole concept of the food stamp program is trying to bring rural produce. Diba? We are rich in that uh, aspect. May, but the problem of our farmers natin lagi is the lack of marketplace. So what we plan to do there is work with the DA also. Another dimension is para hindi na bubulok or nasasayang yung mga produce natin. And uh, remember, last Monday, if I'm not mistaken, Congressman Salceda made that statement nga na 30% of uh, farmers are actually poor. And they will benefit twofold into this program. Not only do they get nutritious, delicious, affordable food, but yung pinoproduce rin nila may bibili na all of a sudden. So it's a captured market, so to speak. A million Filipino families who are hungry will be your captured market. And uh, again, working with the FNRI, working with also with the DOH, we, uh, in that program stage na four years, we want to create a behavioral change in our households. Kailangan maturuan natin sila na ang ating mga beneficiaries na ang mura ay pwedeng maging masarap, pwedeng maging masustansya. It's mura, masustansya, masarap na pagkain para sa hapag ng bawat pal pamilyang Pilipino. So it's an exciting program kasi it's multidimensional. And alam naman, pagka multidimensional, it's no longer a DSWD program by itself. But the President emphasized that it's not a standalone program. Rather, the Department of Agriculture, Department of Health, DILG, DTI, kasi di ba may work component to, may work requirement. And then the other agencies like TESDA, uh, FNRI, it's now a bigger program that is no longer standalone. Kanina nga nasabi ko parang kung dati, Single singer yung programa, ang gusto natin, it's a choir. Singing the same song, and that choir is going to say, we're going to end hunger, but at the same time, we're going to end uh, stunting. Okay. Let's open the floor to questions. 
Eden Santos, Net 25. Okay. Uh, good morning po, Secretaries. Um, may I know kung meron po kayong exact figure kung ilan yung mga stunted children sa Pilipinas? And then, uh, existing na po yung pro feeding program even sa mga barangays. Uh, kanina nabanggit ni Secretary Arbosa na DILG magiging implementing uh, agency din. Uh, yun po bang uh, programa ng mga barangay, local government units are separate po dito or mas palalakasin nyo na lang yung kanilang existing program para po dun sa uh, feeding program ng mga bata para mas ma-target po natin yung mga stunted at yung mga malnutrition. Figures po okay. muna. Uh, since, Thank you. Uh, I don't have the figures, I just sat, no? but I, I can tell you for a fact that the targeted population of the one million poorest Filipinos has the highest rate of stunting and highest rate of malnutrition. That's he's doing the correct thing. Pero yung figures I can give that to you later. I have my and uh, there she is. She has data. Maybe she can she can tell me what the data is on the mal. I have the head of the National Nutrition Council, Assistant Secretary Dayang Hirang, to actually tell us that data. Begin na lang ng mic para she can state it. Now, so while she's taking that data, Eden, yung tanong mo kung syempre may, may uh, autonomy ang ating mga local government units para patakboy ng kanilang mga programa, complementary itong mga national government programs. Um, katulad yung binanggit ko na sa inyo, yung PMNP. I think a lot of you mm -hmm. ran stories on that when the president launched it in Manila Hotel 60 days ago, roughly 60 days ago. The PMNP is a... Kasi yung mga karamihan sa mga programa natin are facility-based. Like yung feeding program ng, de de ng DSWD, daycare age na yun eh. Ibig sabihin may assumption na yung bata na capture lang natin during pagpasok niya na. Ganun rin sa kinder Dep all the way to grade 6 sa DepEd. So ang problema natin is yung first 1,000 days mula sa pagbubuntis hanggang sa pagpapasuso yung lactating mothers. Crucial yung period na yun kasi nga may mga studies that show na by the time na makarating sila ng daycare, yung stunting nangyari na. So, irreversible na. Ang paradigm shift natin sa administrasyon na to, kung kaya ko sabihin siguro, uh, yung attacking the problem doon pa lang sa first 1,000 days. Ang longest, for the longest time, di ba maaari marami sa inyo nagtatanong, eh, ang dami ng feeding program. Let's not get confused ha. The feeding programs, majority of the feeding programs natin, majority, I'm not saying all, sa national government are facility-based feeding program. Yes. Na-capture na natin sila. May naglalakad na yung bata, so to speak. Pero yung nasa, chan, nasa sinapupunan pa lang siya, wala pa tayong ganun ka-aggressive na programa. And if I may boldly say, it is in this administration that we're going to tackle the problem even before they get to our facilities. Siguro I can give you the figure now and I'm shocked. I'm really shocked. The stunting rates are for ages 0 to 23 months old. It's 21.6%. That's one in five children. It's actually very high. For under five, it's 28.7. So a third. That's high. I'm, I'm, I'm depressed now. Oh, don't be depressed. I'm a doctor. So when I see figures of people, you know, when you go to the doctor and you Eden, show I think their lab results, if I can we really just, need to do this. Yeah. yeah, if I can just add again, uh, um, people may ask what happened to all the feeding programs. How come the numbers are the same? That's why now I have to... Uh, si SecTed can explain, that, uh, yeah, explain na that. most of our programs are facility-based programs. Uh, the, probably at the daycare age of three years old or four years old before government comes into the picture. Uh, but there are successful LGU programs like the one that Sec Ben Hur ran when he was a mayor yes. in Mandaluyong wherein they track down yung mga uh, lactating and pregnant women. So those were programs that we may scale up now. And through the PMNP, at the same time, through working with SecTed, um, and ako, I can just speak for the DSWD. Uh, remember, we have city links and municipal links. Sila yung mga nagba, hindi nagbabantay, nagmo-monitor sa ating mga four-piece beneficiaries. So, ang gagamitin natin sila ngayon to track down all our pregnant women and lactating mothers so that we can scale up the program ng LGU ng Mandaluyong um, so that uh, the necessary inputs are given at the first 1,000 days. I'll add to that. The president wanted a more cohesive approach to this problem of hunger and uh, addressing the poor. 
And he was asking, I don't want duplication kasi nga baka pa ulit-ulit lang ibang agency nagfi-feeding program. Meron sa meron sa LGU, meron sa DepEd, meron sa DSWD, meron sa DOH. So we're trying to now put them all together in one unified uh, life stages approach. So yun ang pinopost ko sa president. I think the way to approach this is a life stage and umpisa do sa buntis. In fact, do sa buntis ang comment ng president is who's taking care of the pregnant teenager? who needs to understand what micronutrients to take when they're pregnant, mm -hmm. what, what type of foods to eat. Wala eh. So that's another thing that's been parang nautos na rin sa akin and that's going to be the Department of Health uh, activity. Second, pagdating mo sa, uh, when they're walking na and they can go to daycare, that's the SWD. Then when they go to DepEd, the one that feeds them is, uh, the, uh, when they go to school age, the DepEd feeds, the may feeding program. Pero ang partnership namin, we're the one that measures the health status. Sino yung batang if you feed sa school age? Sino yung batang if you feed sa daycare? Kasi hindi naman sila lahat malnourished. But I see dun sa statistics, it's about 20%. So, uh, one in five kids, I need to feed properly with correct nutrients. So, ang, ang sabi ko sa president, pag duktong-duktokin natin yan, parang barbecue, safety net yung huli. Kasi yung sa school age, which is the emphasis before of the past administration, Huli na ang brain development, kaya mababa ang IQ ng mga Pilipino. So, uh, so nalalaan yung statistics yun, naiinsulto tayo dahil mababa. Eh kaya pala, ganun pala. And the, the best answer of this is the first 1,000 days coalition. Because brain development starts in the womb. And then it continues with mandatory breastfeeding. If you're, if, so if I'm feeding the mother correctly through the voucher program or the food stamp program, makakakain si mommy. Ma ma breastfeed niya yung baby niya up to six months and by the time the, b the baby is more than six months kaya na ng oral feeding yun they should also get nutrients um, and uy mataas din yan ah. <laughs> so for the pregnant the uh, nutritionally at risk that means payat na sila they were malnourished even before they got pregnant teenager in this in this socioeconomic level is 16.4 percent that means and, and if all of you have been pregnant before you're actually feeding two people that's why you're, you're, you're advised by the obstetrician to, to take this and what food to take. But our, our, our people need education on this, health education, and then they have to be watched. Their weight is actually followed. If you're uh, in the higher socioeconomic level, they can visit the obstetrician all the time. But the poor can't do that. So we end up with kids that are born already stunted. Low, low birth weight at, uh, at, uh, at the time they are born. And then when we go, and the focus in the past had been the school age. Brain develop stops after that. Uh, brain development is like the first seven years. You fully develop adult brain already by the time you go to school. So even if I do feeding, the damage has happened. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I like the fact that Rex likes the first 1,000 days. Sabuntis pa lang. Papakainin ko na siya ng tamang nutrients. Actually, hindi lang food yun eh. It's about the micronutrients, folic acid. Napansin nyo ang vitamins ng buntis, iba sa vitamins na ordinaryong tao. Kasi nakapasok na doon yung folic acid, iron, and several things that the baby needs. So, yun yun. yun. And, and we're going to make sure that all pregnant women, whether they're teenage, unplanned pregnancy, should be able to get. And I think that's the message I think I'm asking from the media. Kasi most of these unplanned pregnancies, nakatago yan until lumabas ng malaki yung chan. By that time, nag-develop na yung fetus. Huli na naman kami. And, uh... Yun, and, uh, naman, may, may tax na naman yung aking kasama. They're saying that the food insecurity prevalent, that means the amount of people that cannot eat the right food uh, and have moderate to severe, uh, yun talagang wala talagang makain. Ha? Totoo yan? 33.4%. That's high. And these are facts. Uh, these are Philippine data. This is our PSA submitted data to. So, no, ma'am? So... Yeah, it's, this is the National Nutrition Survey, which is done regularly every year. So this assesses the nutrition part. So I'm glad this president and the Secretary Rex are focusing on, on food stamps and hunger because I will have less problems in health. Kasi tandaan nyo, nutrition is related to wellness. That means, ito rin yung mga batang magkaka-TB, magkaka-bronconeumonia, ma-hospital. So if I have good nutrition in children, Hindi mapupuno ang ospital kasi malulusog yung mga bata. Makakapasok sila sa eskwela, gagraduate sila ng K-12. Pwede sila magtrabaho at hindi sila sakitin. Siguro kayo may mga kasama sa trabaho na sakitin, laging absent. Baka sila yun, nandun dun sa statistics na minention ko. So it's really very important. And the, I heard the president clearly say, 
He wants this solved. He mm -hmm. wants this problem Sekhted, solved. I just want to drive the message of the president earlier when he said that this uh, an investment in nutrition, especially in the first 1,000 days and in the feeding program, is an investment in our future. Because when we have the children who are properly nourished, they grow up and they go to college. Yeah. They have the, capaci the brain capacity to further their education and have better jobs. And this eventually will... Um, benefit our economy. So yes. this is in keeping with the Philippine Development Plan and how we want to uh, develop and be progressive. Okay, Sec Definitely, we always say in the department now that whenever we talk about investment, it's not just gravel and sand. Hindi lang siya puro infrastructure, but rather what the president is saying is human capital is an investment to human capital is probably the best investment we can make. So that's uh, the uh, uh, the thrust of the morning's meeting, mm -hmm. uh -huh. investment in human capital. By the way, I know that the byline is in DSWD, Bawat Buhay Mahalaga. I said, I can also use that in the Department of Health. I said, Healthy Filipinas, that, 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 Bawat Buhay Mahalaga. There's a tagline. 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 Okay, Alvin Baltasar. Secretary, it's a good morning. Para malilaw na lang, ano po ba yung magiging composition ng uh, masusustansyang pagkain na isasama natin doon sa uh, stamp food program in specific? Uh, we worked with, remember na pakita ko, no, uh, I, I think we showed it early on, na kumonsulta ang DSWD sa FNRI. Kaya kanil ng umaga nandun si Director Imelda ng FNRI. They, they identified the first the components, 50% carbs, 30% protein, 20% fats, no healthy fats. And then from within that food group, sila will identify. But of course, that's why DA has to be reeled into the picture kasi may mga supply uh, components moving here, di ba? Bottom line naman, this country is rich in production. What we just may have to make sure is link them up with the marketplace. So, pag carbs, we'll have FNRI identify which carb types there is. All of this you'll see in the pilot stage, which we are about to unveil. And then, you know, there are nuances like, diba, recently there was a news about squash na na, mm -hmm. na sisira, diba? So, those can be added into the picture. Kung may oversupply ng certain produce that's healthy, we can also put them into the menu that they will buy, or I mean, the food credits that they will avail of. Secretary, doon sa nabanggit nyo kanina about the uh, Department of Agriculture at uh, yung sa mga magsasaka, ibig ba sabihin ito, may possibility na yung mga supply ng pagkain na gagamitin natin sa stamp food program, bibili ng uh, DSWD? Sa kan well, ang konsepto is, di ba, remember, we will organize more of the kadiwa ng Pangulo. Ang kadiwa ng Pangulo kasi is our grassroots community markets or bagsakan yan eh. So uh, the DA will has organized a lot of these and then we will keep on organizing more para yun ang unang tangkilikin ng ating mga beneficiaryo. So in a way, we help our rural poor, our farmers. At the same time, we help our urban poor, which are yung mga, or yung mga uh, beneficiaries na kabibili ng pagkain na yun. Gusto ko dagdagan siguro yung comment on yung type of food kasi that's a very important question in my many years in the health sector. What I've found is that Many people think that vegetables are not are not healthy, especially in the poor. Because they just like eating, yung kinakain ng mayaman, yung fast food, yung meat, yung fish. Tapos yung mga mayaman binibili yung mga mahal na gulay na organic para maging healthy and fit. So I think I think I I need your help as Secretary of Health. I need the help of media to to improve health literacy. Mukang hindi na intindihan that akala ng mahirap yung gulay pang mahirap. Diba? Yung hindi na alam healthy yon yung malunggay, yung at yung mga rich naman yun ang gustong kainin, di ba? Salad, salad with dressing and everything. So I think there's a, something wrong in the messaging. Ta, ta, uh, di ba? And tapos yung mga fast food nag-change na sila. Dinagdagan nila yung vegetables. Tapos what what saddens me is when I see in the news all these vegetables rotting. Dapat kinain ng Pilipino yon, kamatis, kalabasa. Kamatis is healthy. Uh, kalabasa, I can tell you, I can, I can give a lecture here, I'm a professor, so I can give a lecture on the nutrients of kalabasa and to see them nabubulok at the bedside of where farmers had a hard time to harvest them, sayang. So, I love this program. Um, uh, si Sek Herbosa will also love the concept of the food nut the nutrition classes. Remember, mm. my conditionality to. We want to elicit behavioral change. 
na yun yung sinasabi niya na may konsepto kasi tayo minsan na pagmura hindi masustansya o hindi masarap. So, tuturuan natin, yung FNRI and the private sector, they have those cookbooks already to prove na as low as 53 pesos, as high as 86 pesos, kaya mo na magluto para sa pamilya ng lima ng masustansya, mura, at masarap na pagkain. So, in that four years that they're part of the program, we have to elicit also a behavioral change in what we buy and what how we cook at home. Okay, Tuesday new DZBB. Good morning, secretaries, ma'am Daphne. Sir, sabi niyo kanina yung stunting rate ages natin 0 to 23 months, 21.6 percent. Yung under five years old, 28.7 percent. So itong program natin na ito, sir, mga ilang porsyento yung target yung maibaba jan hanggang sa matapos yung uh, termino ni Pangulong uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. Uh, well, that was one of the discussions, a long discussion on what is quantifiable. Because the, the president asked, the, the program is nice, right? Subjectively, you will stop hunger and you will stop, uh, you will help the poor. Pero sabi niya, but I want quantifiable measures. Kaya ako nagsalita. Sinabi ko, actually, sa help po napupunta yan. So mag-uusap kami ni Secretary Rex, who will, pro of course, promise what is doable. Kasi depende yan, pilot pa lang tayo. Eh. But if you ask me, I want to, to, to hit 50% of that is decreased para talagang pababa and then hindi mo naman mazizero yan eh kasi there will be hard to reach errors but you know it's a, a nice target uh, sec rex is to say at the end of this program 50% na lang yung I mean uh, makat to half yung problema natin on stunting and uh, poor nutrition Tuesday let me just qualify again some more uh, stunting cannot be eradicated overnight yes. but we can start it to layer the program and isaddle natin siya na siya lang ang solusyon I think is not the whole idea of tying down all the programs ng gobyerno to fight it. This program, uh, alam natin ang stunting may ibang nutrition specific at ibang nutrition sensitive interventions. Kahit na pinapakain mo yan ng masustansya pero wala namang wash facilities, mm -hmm. magkakasakit din siya. Very complex ang nutrition issue. So we have to also say na hindi lang itong programa na to ang susugpo Kung hindi, ang pamilya ng mga programa na nasa arsenal ng gobyerno, binanggit ko pa ulit-ulit ako, yung Philippine Multisectoral Nutrition Program. Kasi may mga lugar tayo sa 4th, 5th class, and 6th class municipalities, walang wash facilities. Mm -hmm. So kahit na bigyan mo ng bigyan ng pagkain yan, pero mamaya konti, unhygienic yung living conditions, yes. ganun din. Another case in point, nutrition, sen uh, nutrition sensitive. Meron din tayong mga lugar pa na maaring kakulang sa daycare centers or in child stimuli. So, pahagi yan. Alam ni Secretary to, siya yung uh, kasama doon sa program na yon. Hindi nyo pwedeng isabihin itong programa na to ay susugpo kaagad. But rather, ang sinasabi natin, lahat ng programa ng pamahalaan, PMNP, itong proposed food stamps program, in-school feeding program, yung uh, K-6 to feeding program, yung mga iba pang interventions like Teenage Pregnancy Intervention Programs, kailan itahi natin sa isang kwento para masigurado natin na nasusog po ang programa. Tuesday, ayaw ko kasi after pilot, titignan ka agad natin, oh, bumaba ba 50%? Kasi alam naman natin na hindi naman pagkain lang ang solusyon. Pero may mga identifiable metrics na kaagad tayong makikita. At yan ang ipaubaya namin sa DOH. Pero ulitin ko, ha, ang nutrition, ang stunting is a multifaceted problem that requires multidimensional solutions. Tatagalogin natin yon. Malalim ang problema ng uh, stunting. Kailangan ng all-of-government approach para masugpo natin ito. Uh, gusto ko lang i-reiterate, no? Uh, the, the fight for hunger and uh, nutrition is the number two priority of the Sustainable Development Goals of 2030. So, kasama yan sa global program for all the uh, people in the, in the, the world too, so that we can reach them. The other one I'd like to explain is baka hindi klaro Yung, bakit yung wash related dun sa food? Uh, ganito yan eh. Ang tinuturo namin, hugas kayo ng kamay bago kumain. Siguro naman the poor, magkakamay yan eh, di ba? Pag kumain yan. Pero kung wala kang toilet facilities, nang galing ka sa palikuran, kakain ka, ano mangyayari sa inyo? Magda-diarrhea ka. Once you have diarrhea, even if I give you nutritious food, it will not be absorbed. Patay yung program niya. So it's, sa, na, naintindihan nyo na nung pagkaduktong ng public health, the nutrition program. Even if, let's say, I go to places, walang running water, walang, walang sabon, walang ano, walang places to keep the food clean, 
I may be giving them food stamps, but they're having diarrhea. Payat din yan. At stunted din sila. There's a GI tract problem that will create, but I won't lecture on that anymore. But suffice it to say that this is really interconnected problem. It's a very complex one. Kung baga sa Facebook, it's complicated. <laughs> but there are solutions. Right. I remember my, because uh, uh, I, I worked in this sector and in this advocacy, um, severe acute malnutrition in children below five, severe acute malnutrition, isn't really caused by lack of food. It's the wrong food. And right. a lot of the babies that are severely malnourished were sick with diarrhea. And ang pag ang bata ay nagkadiarrhea, it nakakamatay siya pag hindi na, na inter, ma, ma intervene. So, and napaka- Ano yung UNICEF ambassador to before her before. current job? She was a, so, I've been working with her because I do some charity work as well. So, I know she's a previous UNICEF ambassador. Ah, thank you. So, we're enlisting her again. Ah, yeah. yeah. Volunteer. So, we're ko na. Ang importante talaga ang breastfeeding. Not just uh, you know, just breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding yeah. from birth to six months. Exclusive means wala ang bata, hindi kailangan ng tubig. Breast milk lang. And this can help prevent illness and also improve the brain development. I think can I just add, balik ako ng balik dun sa PMNP kasi you might want to revisit your stories on that. It's a World Bank loan. 70% went to DOH, 30% went to us sa DSWD. It meron siyang dalawang component doon, nutrition specific, nutrition sensitive. But we let the community identify their needs. Merong isang community nga who is proposing, hindi to kami magsusubo ng proyekto. May isang community nag, nag propose milk banks mm. as one of their infra projects kasi meron tong mga infra component eh. Uh, ano sila, community development initiative siya. They identify it, they the community together with all the stakeholders. They identify the problem, they identify the solution, they procure the program, the project, and they implement the project. So, tama si Daphne, there's a community out there, I just forgot the name, na ang initial salvo nila is, yung makukuha namin dyan sa grant na yan, no, ang nutrition sensitive namin sana na programa na isusulong, a uh, community uh, uh, blo- uh, breast milk banks. Right. Kasi, wala silang storage facility. Mm-hmm. So, kahit na um, ano pang gawin nila, talagang maliliit pa rin yung mga bata doon. So, yung ganong klaseng mga interventions ang gusto namin itali doon sa programa. So, let me concretize the concept. No? Kasi nagpakita ng video si Secretary Rex after. At natuwa ako doon sa video in the pilot project in Siargao. Yeah. Siargao. And sabi nung in-interview na nakakuha ng food stamp, sabi niya, ayaw namin ng gulay kasi natatanim namin yan. Eh. So, ang kailangan niya yung asukal, yung bigas. So, with the food stamp, Alam nila yung bibili na. Kasi pinakita doon, may kanya-kanya silang grocery pot using the food stamp na binigay sa kanila. So, it becomes personalized kung ano yung kailangan mo sa bahay. But then, we need to educate them kung ano yung tamang nutrition. So, nyo, so there, this will be augmented by home, urban agriculture, di ba? Kasi yung gulay na tatanim mo sa bahay, I just need to teach them na yung gulay na tinanim nyo, healthy yan. Green leafy vegetables and everything. Yan yung mahal ang binabayad ng mga nakatira dyan sa mga exclusive subdivision na may lalagyan mo na ng konting olive oil at salad. Eh, mahal na ang bayad. Coconut oil. Soul foods. foods. Maricel Halili. Natatawa kayo, mahilig kasi kayo sa Nag-ugutom salad. Nagugutom na kami. <laughs> Maricel Halili, TV5. Ay, magandang umaga po. Sir Rex, quick follow-up lang po. Paano natin pipiliin yung mga pregnant women? Ah, di ba ang una kong discussion point sa inyo was income. Yes. Remember, the, the poorest 1 million in our list tahanan. So kung uh, 1 million yon, malamang sigurado ko may matitisod at matitisod dahil sa isang million na yon ng buntis at nagpapasuso. Pero, yung nabanggit ko kanina, sa loob ng departamento namin, marami ring running programs na may mga mekanismo para maka-identify pa tayo. Um, babalik na ko yung 4 piece program natin. Remember sa 4 piece, meron yung tinatawag na city link at municipal link. Mga individual to, na contract of service sa departamento na nakakalat sa buong bansa para i-monitor yung mga 4 piece beneficiaries. We're thinking of enlisting them already para makuha natin yung datos na updated pagdating sa sana, sino ang buntis at naglalactate sa lugar nila. Kasi tama nga ang Pangulo kanina, kung self-registration yan, sa dami ng ginagawa ng mga pamilya natin, baka hindi sila magparegister eh. Or the lack of information kasi liblib na pook yon. So, ang importante ngayon is to enlist our ground troops in DSWD, mga city link and municipal link officers namin. Marami yan. And they're paid by your taxes already. To make sure that they also bring in lactating and pregnant women. 
Mari kasi sabi nila ng tao, eh magkaiba yung four-piece pang edukasyon, yun yung na monitor nila. But nothing stops us from adding new dimensions to not what the four-piece is about, but yung trabaho nung gumagawa nun. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir Ted, medyo yes. lilihis lang po ako ng Sige. issue. Yung tungkol lang po sa bivalent, meron na po ba tayong update? Kailan po natin sisimulan yung okay. pagbibigay ng bivalent? And sino po yung una nating bibigyan? Okay, so na, na dumating na yung 390,000 doses of uh, bivalent COVID-19 vaccine which came from COVAX. So it's a donation, no? hindi to pre-nuclear. And they, uh, as of this moment, as we speak, I think they've already been redistributed to the different regions of the Department of Health. So it's going to be, meron parang may depots kasi, kasi may cold chain ang vaccine. So kailangan that's kept in the right temperature. And then after that, I alam ko, majority went to NCR, and then the rest of all the regions will get, kulang na kulang po itong 390,000. Mm -hmm. So what we will have to do is to prioritize who needs it first. So number one, of course, the elderly. Number two, yung may comorbidity. Number three, yung healthcare workers na paso na yung kanilang... Kasi di ba inuna rin natin yung healthcare workers, so nag na siguro yung immunity nila. We need to protect them also. Pero we were also negotiating to acquire more. There are more that uh, want to donate. There are probably some procurement that we need to do. So may meron lang snag and issues kasi nawala yung public health emergency na eh. So, the issues of the vaccine in terms of the EUA. So, to procure it, kailangan marehistro siya sa ating FDA. So, merong snag doon, but we are trying hard to get all this bivalent. Now, remember, we're not the only country that wants the bivalent. Ha? Lahat ng country nag-aagawan din dito. So, para, para itong deja vu sa akin, kasi I was with the vaccine cluster. Kita niyo naman ako, kasama niyo ako lagi sa airport. Sinasalubong yung mga, ay, Diyos ko, may bakuna na naman kami <laughs> para may maibigay. So, it's going to be the same story. Might be a little bit more difficult. To just give you an idea, when let's say I order, the Philippines orders a vaccine from the vaccine manufacturer, hindi yan from off the shelf. Naakala niyong kukunin, lalagay sa aeroplano, isasa dito. Hindi, that's the only time they will produce it. Yung iba, naging ipa ng deposit ng bayad dyan, na kontra sa COA natin, di ba? Kailangan kasi i-deliver muna bago bayaran. But because it's an international procurement, may mga terms of reference ng payment dyan. That's the only time they will manufacture the vaccine. Di ba yun siya? Para pagdating yun, maigsi kasi shelf life nun. Kasi pag ang binili ko, yung nando na, eh, makikita nyo, ini-issuehan nyo ako na nag-expire yung bivalent vaccines kasi six months lang ang short term, uh, shelf life niyan. Wala nang gamit. So, pag binili mo yan off the shelf, like this one, this donation, they end in November 23. That's the expiry date. So, I need to start vaccinating people immediately. Sir, kailan po? Uh, I'll, eh, dapat magtuloy na yan with the LGUs. Once it's there, pwede na yan in the center. So, I will check after this meeting. So, it's a very important question. I will check if the distribution has been done. Ang nag inject kasi hindi DOH, di ba? Ang nag inject LGU. Uh, so, nakita niyo naman yung partnership dito. So, I think you understand. Kami magdi-distribute nasa regional hubs. And then we expect the DILG to actually implement this and help us implement inject this. I, I, I'm very sure if I bring this out, ubus ka agad to. In the cabinet meeting lang eh, may dalawa na kagad cabinet secretary lumapit sa... And of course, they're qualified. Kasi they're elderly and they have comorbidity. So, of course, they will, I will give them. But they're, they're, in the, in, they're in the category. Pero just be patient. Uh, we, that's, the vaccine is not our only weapon. We have learned so much in our pandemic. We now look, some of you are wearing masks. You, you understand this disease is airborne. We also understand that if you have symptoms, sa bahay kayo, huwag na kayo magtrabaho. It, and I think that's, that's what I want to give us a message. Tama na yung COVID-19. Ekonomiya na muna tayo. Mga bawat boy, mga nahirapan dun sa treatment. We doctors already know how to treat you pag nagka-COVID. And wala na kayo nating masyadong namamatay, di ba? Because we already have the medicines, Molnupiravir, Remdesivir, and we know how to treat COVID. So hindi na siya bago. So the story is not the same. But we will continue to push for people to get vaccinated because it will prevent you, especially if you're high risk, from dying. Kasi ngayon ang usapan na hindi yung numero na nagka-COVID. Naalala niyo itong mga nakaraang linggo, tumataas yung test positivity rate. May report ba kami mga namatay? Even in my hospital in PGH, kasi I was head of ER, isa, dalawa lang every day ang na-hospital. And sila yung may comorbidity. And sometimes, kung may mantay na isa o dalawa, it's because of that comorbidity. Kasi mas malala ang condition niya. So, huwag tayong matakot niyan. If me as the health secretary of this country, my feeling is it's now 
uh, disease under surveillance, which is what the public, the WHO said, it's just like your influenza-like illnesses. We're in, uh, it's any like airborne respiratory infection, flu, cough and colds, etc. So I would like to treat it that way. I've traveled abroad before coming uh, to, us, uh, to my post. Madaming other countries don't wear, even wear a mask. I'm really happy as a Philippines, nagma mask patayo, which is extra protection. Because we don't have the health system that is robust enough to address you pag nagkaroon ng malaking outbreak. So, continue wearing your mask. Uh, it is now your own decision. I will not mandate it. Kaya siya, nagtatago na siya. No, it is a, it is a personal choice. Parang advice sa'yo ng doktor, oy, mag-ingat ka, di ba? Pag, pag may TB ka, mag-mask ka, baka makahawa ka ng iba. So, the, the, the decision to take care of your health is with the information I will give that you guys will write in your articles and tell the people, ito ang sitwasyon natin. And if you get sick, we will accept you in our hospitals and treat you properly so that you won't die. Ganun lang Thank you. We have time for one more question, or two. <laughs> Nestor Corrales, Philippine Daily Inquirer. To Secretary Herboso, on an equally important issue, uh, any update on the 12.57 billion worth of uh, emergency allowances that the medical frontliners have yet to release. Oh, Why was you. it delayed? Because the Department of no. Budget and Management said it was already released to the DOH. Yes, it was already it was already driven, so it happened before my time. I'm sorry, I just have to tell you hearsay evidence because this is what they told me. So they, uh, the report to me is that most of the benefits have already been given out. There are some, those that have not received had some technical issues with the hospital administration or directors of them. And I was told it was mostly private hospitals. So, sa government na, na bigay lahat yan. So, make sure. Kasi, you know why? The, the private hospitals don't have the same processes we do in government. Lahat ng papel yung bago gagawa ka. Alam ng mga government director hospitals na makukuha sila every centavo niyan. So, the distribution was right. Kasi may mga hinihingi eh. Nag-duty ka ba talaga dun sa COVID ward? Ilang days ka nag-duty dun? Yung documentation nun, I think those are, are where the, the not, not distributed were give, were, are, are, is a problem. Pero hindi, kawawa yung nurse. Ako to me, kawawa yung nurse. Proseso to. But I also cannot change the process. Makukulong naman ako. Kung sasabihin ng nurse, Dr. Bosa, wala pa akong benefit. O, ito benefits mo. Because there is a process. And their hospital directors and their regional directors should actually follow. So that's the good thing. Alam mo, parang 90% nakita ko na i-distribute na eh. But I'll, 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 get correct, I'll get correct facts with you. Uh, medyo, ang dami pa lang talagang issue as a Secretary of Health. Uh, <laughs> Mas madali trabaho ko ng undersecretary. But I'm telling you, I'll get on top of this because I feel the nurses are our real priority. And I'm going to tell this on national TV. I really love the nurses because they are our health care system. Sila ang nag-aalaga sa inyo pag na-hospital kayo. Sila yung nasa tabi nyo 24-7. Kami doktor, hindi naman eh. So I really think that if nurses need to be paid, they should be paid. And the other thing is, I don't want them to leave the Philippines. Because we need them for the programs that the Department of Health will, want, will deliver. If I want good health services, I will need all the nurses I, I get. And that's why they're pirating our nurses. What does that mean? Our nurses are the best in the world. Kasi binabayaran talaga nila. Ang sabi nga sa akin ni Presidente nung, nung nag-usap kami, the first time he offered me the job, sabi niya, oh, nga, Ted, when I told him about that problem, oh, nga, Dr. Ted, every meeting, a president, a head of state approaches me Ang unang hinihingi, can you provide us nurses? So ako to me, that's good in a way kasi magagaling nurses natin. Totoo naman 'yun, di ba? Pag nagkasakit kayo, in alaga ah, Problem is we can't lose all of them. So I've had several press releases you probably read it on the radio also, or read it in the news. I'm really trying to solve this with a more lateral approach, lateral thinking approach and more innovative ideas in trying to get them to stay in the Philippines. The, the sad part is there are 4,500 vacant plantilla items in the Department of Health alone. I'm not going to count the, the LGU hospitals. Kasi walang nurse nag apply Bakit walang nurse nag apply Nasa na sila. So, hinahanap ko ngayon yung mga un, uh, board eligible. Hinahanap ko yung mga nagtatrabaho sa BPO. Hinahanap ko yung nurse na nasa flight, flight industry, yung nasa uh, sales industry, mga med rep. Yeah. Uh, shout out. Uh, oh, just say inyo yung. We have a follow-up question. For those that are licensed, there are 4,500 
items. But that's all over the Philippines, ha? so hindi lang sa Metro Manila. Okay, so we have Nestor and then Cathy Valente and Melo is Mars. you mentioned there are still remaining unpaid uh, medical frontliners. How long will they wait? What's your timeline? What's your assurance to them that this will be given to them the soonest possible time? Well, as long as the documentation is there, they should be paid. Okay, Cathy Valente, Manila Times. Good afternoon, sir. I guess like Gachelian po. Sir, update lang po sa ongoing uh, food distribution sa Albay since the permanent danger zone has been expanded. Mas marami ng evacuees. Kamusta po ang ating mga evacuees uh, Okay. First of all, uh, the president is uh, monitoring the situation carefully. Uh, we've been in constant communication since last week almost on a daily or hourly basis about his uh, uh, directives on making sure that lahat ng mga na-evacuate ay may pagkain. Alam naman natin ang pagpapatakbo ng uh, evacuation centers are the responsibilities of the local government unit. But the DSWD, upon instruction of the president, uh, will give them or gave them the uh, necessary logistic support. I was there last Saturday, met with Governor Greg Slagman, together with the uh, nine affected or will be affected LGUs to include the city of Legazpi. So ang naging agreement namin doon, the first five waves ng pagkain, uh, a wave is three days. Uh, at that time, ang target natin, 8,000 families. Uh, that will be around close to 26,000, 27,000 na, na uh, food packs uh, na bigay na natin sa kanila. So meaning, it's already with them. So the first five waves, they're covered na. Uh, you can do the math lang, medyo mahina ako dyan, but uh, it's in here. Uh, 8,000 families yan, all in all. Five waves already accounted for. So, nasa kamay na ng mga local government units natin yan. 38,000, sorry, it's around 38,000 na food packs ang hawak na ng various local government units to include the provincial government. Now, bakit first 15 muna? Kasi yung next 6 naman na days, provincial government ang sasagot. Mm. So, sabi nila, we want to complement each other's resources rather than overlap each other's right. resources. Now, pagtapos ng 6 days nila, that brings us to 21 days, papasok ulit ang DSWD with another 15 days. Okay. So it's wave after wave. Then 40, that will bring us close to 45 days, which is historically the minimum or minsan nangyayari pa yung eruption na hanggang 45 days lang. Now, what if it protracts to 90 days? The DSWD will again sit down with the LGU to make sure na meron kami ulit na arrangement as to who feeds on what days. So bottom line natin dito, lahat ng nilikas na mga pa lokal na pamahalaan na nasa evacuation center, hawak na ng kanilang mga alkalde ng kanilang mga local officials yung food for the next 15 days. And then after which, the provincial government will step in. Now, alam natin na yung mga food pack na yan, eh, hindi naman yan lahat ng pangangailangan mo nandun sa loob kasi typical yan eh. Pero so, again, balik tayo kung mayroon kang anak na maliit na kailangan ng gata, so and so forth. Nag-uusap na rin kami ng local government upon the instruction of the president na baka kailangan sustentohan rin natin o ayudahan natin ng financial assistance. So, nag-uusap at mag-uusap pa kami ulit ni governor kung paano at kailan natin ipamamahagi ang financial assistance at kung magkano. Uh, we are always in communication with Governor Greg Slagman. We are also talking to the congressional representation of Albay uh, so to get all the varying inputs kung paano pa tayo makakatulong. Okay. Last question, Mela Les Moras, PTV4. Hi, good morning po, secretaries and Ms. Daphne. As a sectoral meet, just a follow-up question po about Albay. As a sectoral meeting, na pag-usapan din po ba kung ano pa yung magiging efforts like DOH, may yeah. madadagdag pa. And as Secretary Gatchalian, are... Uh, are you planning to go back din po sa Albay? Si Pangulong Marcos din kaya ay uh, bibisita doon. Ano po yung uh, future, uh, mga dapat pang asahan ng mga taga-Albay ngayon nga uh, may hamon, ng, uh, may banta ng uh, mayon sa kanila ngayon? Salamat, Mela. Actually, nung Sabado, I got a message on my Twitter account kasi siguro hindi pa alam ni Secretary Rex yung telepono ko pero magka-follower kami sa Twitter. Message me. Sabi niya, sabi, we follow each other even before. Nag-ano siya, nag-mention siya, sabi niya ganun. There, there's some problems in the evacuation center. So nag-call ako ng command conference on the following day, Sunday. So I talked to the RDs and all the provincial health officers and all the... And I discovered many of the evacuation centers are getting overcrowded and they need wash facilities kasi pag dumadami tao diyan palikuran ng kailangan so padadala na nat padadala i think na padala na ang aming wash team meron kami tinatawag na wash team sa Department of Health Health Emergency Management Bureau or yung Disaster Risk Reduction Management Office pagkatapos nang hingi din silang pera 
kasi medyo isang linggo na to eh, di ba? So kinukulang na yung pera. So I'll, I'll be trying to send with the proper documentation additional funds to the region. And I asked the question, sabi ko, kamusta na mga tao? Kasi in any disaster, that's my field by the way, I'm a disaster medicine specialist. It's take care of your health workers, sabi ko. Alagaan nyo kasi make sure walang burnout, walang, walang ma anxiety. So, so those are my instructions to them and I will send another team para ma-augment sila, kagaya nung alternating with waves. So, we need to send more health teams to the area. And it's going, ang sabi sa akin, mga 90 days pa to. So, it looks like this is a long, long drawn-out uh, activity. And uh, it's a whole-of-nation approach again. Uh, Secretary Gibotidoro was also talking to me last Saturday. Ang exact words niya, if the department needs the logistics ng DND, it is at uh, to our disposal. And then, nung nandun ako, na-meet ko rin, nandun yung OCD people natin. Kasi ang naging isang concern is potable drinking water. Yes. So, dinala na ng OCD lahat ng kanilang uh, filtration machines na nasa Metro Manila. Nandun na, as we speak. Kanina, kausap ko si Secretary Abalos. Papadala rin yung mga nasa MMDA. And then, to also, like to thank, of, take the opportunity to thank uh, Secretary Abalos for facility and the Royal Family of the United Arab Emirates. Kasi nag-facilitate si Secretary Abalos, a counterpart niya doon, who happens to be part of the Royal Family ng 50 tons of uh, various food items na dumating kahapon. 24 hours lang yan minobilize. The 50 tons composes of rice, milk, iba-iba. So as we speak right now, na mobilize na rin ng DSWD yun, and it should arrive al by later on tonight. And then more are coming in and the assurance of the department is all in-kind donations that scores through us will get to Albay in the fastest possible time. So every machinery of the government, I think, is already moving. DOH is already procured or has the mask. Has the mask. Also, in the request for the face mask additional. Okay. Because there was emissions. Thank you so much. This has been a great and wonderful press conference. And... Uh, welcome Thank you very <laughs> on much. your first press con here uh, in uh, I just like Malacanang to say I'm, Press Corps. I'm really honored to, to be given this uh, task to serve the government and the Filipino people, and I thank the president for that opportunity. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Malacanang Press Corps. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. <laughs>